more to be done to that, I know. Look, morning y'all. The next four weeks, maybe longer, it's going to be very hard work. Walls are coming down, offices are being moved. Wish me luck. It's Monday morning. Busy week trying to get ready for half term next week, so there won't be any daily vlogs next week. I'm going on a little half term trip with the fam, which can't wait. We're up to 23,000 pounds for Children's Hospice Southwest. Link down below if you haven't had a chance to donate already, you want to win my MP5 irons that I've played for the last year, year and a half, two years, whatever it is, and a chance to win five Under Armour Spieth 2 golf shoes, so five pairs of their shoes as well. Big draw comes tomorrow, Tuesday, so if you haven't donated already, hit that link down below. We've also got today's video brought to you by Golf Online and the winner of last week's voucher will be announced at the end of the video as well. Have you won some money? So today's vlog is going to be about this. So this comment was on my technology video about um, old players not having access to tech. So I have to ask the question again. Are club handicaps coming down? What's the net effects of all this technology, Mark? Do you monitor your students' handicaps? Keep improving my swing, but I'm buggered if I can budge my handicap. So we're going to talk about the importance of lessons and what they can do on many different levels that lots of people, I think, certainly in the YouTube community, certainly the ones posting comments, often forget what lessons are about on the bigger picture. It's not only, here's a shocking one for you, it's not only about lowering your handicap. Think about that. So first ideas around lessons and how they help golfers. Think about it this way, I think people forget this. Certainly people who are in golf clubs playing, there are far more recreational golfers. Golfers not really playing in competitions, even ones with handicaps who are just, they've got a handicap and then they're not really supporting it or they have maybe a society handicap. And then there are people playing in club medals every week. So for every player I would guess, and these are pure guesstimations, for every handicap I improve, I would guess there's between 5 and 30 players who handicaps would go up compared to the amount of people having lessons active in golf compared to the players not having lessons active in golf and then all those other players outside on the rims of that as well. People who are active in golf taking lessons to improve is a tiny percentage of that golfing public. So a truer stat I guess would be how many of the golfers taking lessons are improving their handicaps, improving their games. And I don't see that stat ever. So yes, handicaps aren't coming down, but the percentage of people who want to practice to get that handicap down and do the work and have the lessons is minuscule. So in my opinion, that stat is never going to be beaten by technology or lessons unless the ethos around how to improve changes or we collect some very different data. Right, I'm going to do all this test. The sun is out, but it is very, very cold. Right, made it to Dawlish, blue sky, very cold again still. Clubs the test, see if I can get warm. When it comes to lessons as well, think about this. I think people forget this point. Lots of my job as coaching through the years, and still is, could be classed as damage limitation. So people are often coming to see me when they're on the way up, and we stop them going up. So what I mean by that is they're off nine. They have a bad year and they go up to 12 or 11. They have another bad year, and enjoyment starts dropping and up they go again to whatever, 13. They come for a lesson with me and we stick them at 13 and the enjoyment level's there because they're happy with that, they feel like it's a respectable handicap and then they also feel like the enjoyment comes back. So that isn't a stat of anyone going down, it's someone enjoying themselves more by playing to a standard they can accept or that they want to. Obviously they might want to work at getting back down to their nine, but they might have also felt like golf was really hard off down off nine, so they're happy around 13 for how much time they've got to put in, all those kind of things. I think people often don't look at the fun factor in golf enough. 
and certainly beat themselves up a lot in this egotistic standard what's your handicap what's the less you've been kind of world which will lead me on to my last point which when I was teaching a lot in London and I mean a lot like 90 lessons a week a lot I learned so much about what people want from golf which was not always what I wanted from golf which I think lots of people often miss with comments like the one we're talking about today Other interesting points to think with the handicaps and lessons is how many golfers come into the game, no handicaps, never played. Their first access to the game is often via a PGA Pro. That pro gets them started, then they obtain a handicap. So it, it's like, it's the first inroad. So that's not gonna bring a handicap down, is it? They're gonna be getting their first handicap. So again, it's often, I personally think forgotten about because PJ Pros as a general rule are hopeless at marketing themselves and their achievements. I mean, you'll be amazed through my years of what I do, the amount of tax I get from PJ Pros. And I just think, cool. Oh, you're happy to sell all your brands who are just peddling distance to make tiny money on golf clubs. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of push people to go and have lessons and not with me because my diary is locked. So people struggle to get lessons with me. Such a powerful force the PJ could be if it united in its goal to show people, I think, its amazing role it does with getting people involved in this game. The other point as well, which I would never be offended with when I was coaching full time and still wouldn't be now. If I've got a student who isn't getting better, and to be honest with you, I can't remember many, if any, like this, and they chose to go to another coach, well, that makes sense to me. For you to be having lessons and not improving, maybe you're not working on the right things. Maybe the coach and you aren't gelling. Like, there are some coaches out there who get really proud. I've never been one of those ones going, oh, look who I'm teaching. Oh, my player's done this. Because I don't think my player has anything to do with me. As in, I feel I can give them confidence and improve their technique. But if they go out and win, that's them. That's their hard work. I've just given them tools to allow them to do that. I've never been a fan of the, ooh, look at my player. Yeah, yeah. Morning, Mark. <laughs> Afternoon. Nice brand new question for you. Got one cavity back club for giving, one bladed. Now, you've always said that obviously the more forgiving club is for the beginners. Uh, beginners. Now, if I slice this club down that actual, if I slice it down there, <laughs> now, people say that the sweet spot is about a 50 pence piece and on a bladed it's probably about a penny now do you know the exact sweet spot width what is the actual sizes you reckon so i don't know the exact size of the sweet spot but this is something that I think gets confused. The, the sweet spot, so the center of gravity of the club, is the same for all clubs. There's a center of gravity, that's the sweet spot. So basically it's the moving sweet spot of your club, aligning with the sweet spot, obviously of the ball, and that collision gives you that sweet, perfect, you know, max energy transfer subject to angles and stuff, shot. Now the more you move away from that centre of gravity, the more there is a drop off in ball speeds. Which is where those game improvement clubs, in theory, are trying to keep that from dropping off so much. So when it comes to actually the sweet spot, it's the same size pretty much on all your clubs. The cent there's a centre of gravity and you've just got to hit it and that's where you get your sweet one. It's trying to limit the drop off in distance when you don't line those things up, which is what the bigger clubs are really trying to do. Trying to get this edit done in an empty room. My office is going. So my last point, and this is the most important one for me, is that people use lessons to try and make golf more fun for them sometimes as well. So what that means is they're not just using them to lower their handicap, they're also using them to meet friends say group lessons, people to play with, people going through the same experiences of, of them in a group so they can 
go on a journey with some other people, share the ups and downs. Also, like I mentioned earlier, what they're doing as well is they're trying to stop the flow of bad shots. So for instance, if you take Rory's chipping, for example, the fact that his chipping is so on and off, not only affects his scores, and then sometimes doesn't, because he doesn't get those shots, but it riddles him with panic. It makes the game less enjoyable to a certain level for him. So improving that part of his game, say for a lesson, might not particularly lower his handicap, but it might allow him to keep his handicap kind of more solidly at hashtag seven, while at the same time making him feel much more relaxed as he plays. Obviously he would try and improve that with the idea of lowering his handicap, but that's so situation based around how many times in the year that shot's gonna be the one that makes him not play to his handicap. So I think people forget sometimes that you're trying to have fun with golf, get obsessed with the handicap race, and then other things like equipment and those kind of ideas where lots of the time, and I mean a lot, lots of my students are coming because they want to improve their understanding and their enjoyment. There's a shot that's making them not enjoy golf so much, not because it's just purely affecting their score, it's because it's one that they can't control and they want to learn how to control it. May it be a slice drive to a duff iron, to a duff chip, to a three putt. Use lessons for lots of reasons. I used to use them um, to lower my handicap because I was driven, I was practicing, I had the time. I also used them to improve my understanding of how to get better. That excited me. Some people aren't excited by that. They just want to have more fun. And quite often, lessons can do that for them. Right, I'm off to boys football. It's going to be freezing, wish me luck. See you all tomorrow. Tomorrow's big presentation day. We've got the five shoes and the MP5s to give away. If you still haven't donated and you want to, link down below. If we can get that 25 grand target would be simply outstanding by you lot all down there. So last week's winner as well, Sam Towsend has won the voucher from Golf Online. He's been notified. Well done, Sam. Post comments down below. Why do you take lessons? Is it purely to stop the bleeding? Is it to lower your handicap? Is it to start the game? Because you've started and that's why you took lessons. Let me know in that comment section down below as always. Speak to you tomorrow. I'm going to get cold. Can't wait for presentation day tomorrow.